What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's filthiest pitches of the day. I am Pitching Ninja, and I'm here with the always awesome Will Leahy. What's happening, Will? It's absolutely right, Ninja. So we had a hell of a game in the Bronx last night to kick open this Dodgers at Yankees series. Great pitching. Can't really call it a pitcher's duel because there were 13 pitchers used in this game. But uh, it went into the 11th, 0 0. You love to see it. I know you were chomping at the bit over there, just loving it, Ninja. What did you think of this performance, Yamamoto? What did you think of this game? For those of you who hated Yamamoto and was like writing him off at the beginning of the year, this is the Yamamoto that we all expected. Those who followed him in Japan looked at his stuff. This was prime Yamamoto. It was fantastic. He had seven Ks and seven scoreless innings, gave up two hits. He was just dominant. He had these fastballs. His fastballs look crisp. They were up a bit, like, I think a mile and a half, almost two miles an hour on all his pitches. Absolutely painted with his splitter. Picked up a sword with his splitter. I mean, look at his 93-mile-an-hour splitter. Freaking ridiculous. Now, I did an overlay of his fastball and splitter. You see what makes this so tough? I think there's a 98-mile-an-hour fastball and a 93-mile-an-hour splitter. They look the same and end up in way different places. And then you had these great home plate views. Thank God for these home plate views because you can see how hard it is to hit major league pitching. This is a 97 mile an hour fastball coming right at you or coming right out of Aaron Judge here. And then here's a 93 mile an hour splitter from a home plate view. How are you going to hit this? How do major league hitters do any of this stuff? It's absolutely incredible. It's seven swings and misses on his fastball this game three on his splitter, three on his slider. And I saw this stat where only four Dodgers pitchers have completed seven innings and had no earned runs in the last 10 years against a team with a 600 winning percentage or higher. And one of those now is Yoshinobu Yamamoto. So Dodgers beat the Yankees two to one in Yankee Stadium. And I love Yamamoto getting fired up after his last K. This clearly meant a lot to him. Where is he on the Rookie of the Year odds, Will? He's got to be way up there now. So right now, Yamamoto is sitting in second at plus 350 in the National League Rookie of the Year. Only behind one, Shota Imanaga. And tied with Paul Skeens, actually, too, at plus 350. I don't know. Like I, My instincts are Yamamoto is going to be a better pitcher over the long haul than Shota will be, even though I love Shota. But, man, we're lucky to have such great pitching. And don't forget Jared Jones out there, too. Rookie pitching in the NL, really solid. Yamamoto went against Cody Poteet, who was also really solid yesterday. He had four and two-thirds scoreless innings, getting only 1K on this painted fastball, but definitely shut down the Dodgers. And it just really was a pitcher's duel. I don't care how many pitchers pitch. Love it. And now we're going to start with the whip around the league. I am not going to do my traditional defeated, edged, beat, whatever. Let's make it more colorful today using the team names. Tobias Myers had the Brewers make a ton of lager and drown the Tigers 10 to nothing. Tobias Myers had five Ks and eight scoreless innings, giving up one hit, these sliders and change-ups. He out Reese Olsen, who was freaking terrible yesterday. Olsen had six Ks and four innings, but gave up eight runs on 12 hits. He had these change-ups and sliders, but honestly, his stuff was pretty good. His command wasn't that great, and that really cost him. Cole Irvin had six Ks in five and two-thirds innings, giving up two earned runs as the Orioles pecked the Rays to death six to three. He had this fastball slider and curveball. He faced Aaron Savali, who had eight Ks in five innings, giving up four runs, and had these cutters and sweepers and hammer curveball. The Marlins poked the Guardians with those long snouty things they got, three to two. Ryan Weathers had three Ks in two and a third innings, giving up two runs. I told Will to take Ryan Weathers on a ladder, five, six, seven Ks yesterday. But unfortunately, Ryan Weathers left the game early, <laughs> hurt his finger with some finger and Luckily, I don't ever listen to Ninja, so it <laughs> worked you. out well. He had these fastballs and sliders. And he faced Logan Allen, who had three Ks and in six innings, giving up two runs, nothing flashy for Allen. He did have these fastballs. The Royals took their scepters and bonked the Mariners, beat them 10-8. to eight. This game featured some really terrible starting pitching, actually. Daniel Lynch gave up eight runs in four innings and four Ks at the slider. Bryce Miller had a rare, terrible outing for him. He gave up seven runs in five innings and only one K on this splitter. Killed my K prop parlay. I nailed every other one. 
And you know what? Screw this pitching. My man, Ryan Bliss, the only hitter I root for, hit a home run, his first home run in the major leagues, and made this amazing play. Check this play out. Derek Jeter, eat your heart out. He could never do this. And I am so familiar with these plays because here's Ryan Bliss playing second base behind my kid on the bump. The Giants stomped the Rangers 5-2. to two. Logan Webb had six Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. He had these two seamers, change-ups, and painted with it. He faced Michael Lorenzo, who wasn't bad, but only had one K. Not exciting. The Padres prayed that the D-backs would go away, and they did. They won 10-3. to Michael King had five Ks and five scoreless innings. He had these two seamers, including this front door two-seamer that was absolutely wicked. He faced Brandon Fought, who had five Ks and five and a third innings, but gave up five runs. Fought had this front door two-seamer, as well as these sweepers. This was a tough one. The Athletics out athleted the Blue Jays two to one. I don't know what do athlete, athletics do. Yeah, whatever. Hogan Harris had three Ks and six scoreless innings, had these fastballs and sliders, and he faced Chris Bassett, who was actually really, really good yesterday. Bassett had seven Ks in eight innings, giving up one run, and this fastball, including this painted backdoor sinker, as well as a sweeper, splitter, and curveball. And Will, did you see Bassett's glove yesterday? No. Nor did anybody, because he wore a camouflage glove. You can't see it. I was wondering what happened. I thought it might've been Jim Abbott up there on the mound for a second. I just didn't see anything there, but glad you clarified, Ninja, thanks. He does have both his arms, Will. Lance Lynn had six Ks in four innings, giving up four runs as the Cardinals flew over the Rockies and took a dump on them and won eight to five. Lynn had these fastballs, which weren't anything special, but Lynn leaving the mound after the third strike is always something special. Here he is saying stupid mother as he walked off the field. Lance Lynn, you never change. Lynn faced Austin Gomber at four Ks in five innings, giving up four runs and had this slider. The Pirates took over the Twins' ship and looted them, shut them out three to nothing. Behind Mitch Keller, who had eight Ks, in six scoreless innings, giving up seven hits. He had these elevated fastballs and these sweepers and added injury to insult with this absolutely wicked sweeper to Kepler, getting the hit-by-pitch swinging strike. I love it. He faced Joe Ryan, who had eight Ks in seven innings, giving up two runs. Ryan had these elevated fastballs and sweeper. The White Sox outsmelled the Red Sox, seven to two. Behind Garrett Crochet's 10 Ks in six innings, giving up one earned run. Crochet had these fastballs, which were overpowering, and even got this call way off the plate. I don't know what the umpire was looking at. That's not a strike. He also had these nasty cutters. I know the White Sox tried to snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory by dropping this would-be last out of the game. I mean... Jesus Christ, they suck so bad. I like how you said they outsmelled them because they certainly both stink. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> These sucks. Crochet had this play thrown a first. It was bad strategy and even worse execution here. And it was one of the worst plays in baseball I've seen in a long time. And the Red Sox still managed to lose to this team. I guess these Sox had a hole in them. But, you know, Gary Crochet, <laughs> yeah. he's, allowed to make, he's allowed to make mistakes because he is so freaking dominant. Some team is going to pick this dude up. And he is like top tier ace stuff for a shitty ass team. Like it's hard, but he keeps doing it. Crochet faced Cooper Criswell with two Ks and four to third innings, giving him three earned runs and had this change up for a sword. The Reds painted. I don't know. What do you do if you're a Red? The Reds painted the Cubs and drowned them in red paint three to two. The Reds had a colorful win. The Reds had a colorful win. Three to two, really good pitching matchup. Nick Lodolo had seven Ks in six innings, giving up one run. He had these fastballs and breaking ball and got this change up for a sword. He faced Justin Steele, who is also really good. Steele had seven Ks in seven innings, giving up three runs. Had these fastballs and dirty sliders. Fromber Valdez threw a complete game yesterday. Woo! Valdez had eight Ks, giving up one run as the Astros flew in the space and slaughtered the angels in heaven, seven to one. He had these sinkers and curveballs, including this backdoor curveball. And he outdueled Griffin Canning, who had two Ks in six and a third innings, giving up three runs and had this curveball and slider. 
Chris Sale was outstanding yesterday with 10 Ks and in seven innings, giving up two runs. And, and Chris Sale put on an absolute slider show yet again. He had all of these freaking sliders. Got a sword on this slider. This one was almost a hit-by-pitch swinging strike. He had this White Castle special. He picked up 15 swings and misses on his slider out of 20 total swings and misses, which was the high for all pitchers yesterday. And check out this freaking overlay. This is amazing. This is a three-pitch strikeout. All of them are sliders, and all of them are in virtually the same exact position. Ridiculous stuff from Chris Sale. And it was still not enough for the Braves to beat the Nationals as the Nationals called out the Cavalry and beat the Braves, avenging the Battle of Bighorn 2-1. to one behind Jake Irvin, who was outstanding with four Ks and six scoreless innings. He had this painted fastball, these curveballs, including this painted curveball. He had nine swings and misses on his curveball. And I think I've told you before, I love Jake Irvin's curveball. Keep throwing it a lot, dude. He also had this, which may have been the longest shake in StatCast history. This is amazing. He must really not like this pitch. He's probably shaking to a curveball. He has to be. I want to see more of them. Remember, subscribe and tell us whether you want us to keep doing scores like this or go back to the old boring method. I'm happy to do either one. Now under the filthiest relievers, Araldis Chapman had this 103 mile an hour heater. Camilo Duvall had this 101 mile an hour fastball and these wicked sliders. Jeremiah Estrada, friend of the show, had this fastball and these sliders. Kyle Finnegan had this nasty splitter and 99 mile an hour heater at the knees. Dakota Hudson had these wicked sliders. John King, not the CNN politics guy, but the John King that pitches had these sliders and change-ups. Jojo Romero had this filthy slider. Tyler Rogers had this rising slider. And Blake Trinan had this pitch that, if you heard the call, you would have thought this was a grand slam. But nope, it was a fly ball that even gets a warning track. What are we doing here? My top five filthiest pitches of the day yesterday. At number five, we have Michael King in his front door two-seamer. At number four, Mason Miller going medieval with these sliders. The Reaper, filthy. At number three, Chris Sale with his wicked sliders and this ridiculous overlay. At number two, we have Mitch Keller's sweeper to Kepler that hits him on the leg. And at number one, Yoshinobu Yamamoto's 93 mile an hour splitter. Just ridiculous stuff from Yamamoto yesterday. And now my pitching ninja moment of Zen. We had a tempted fan catch yesterday, which resulted in a beer splattering. Today, we have this absolute train wreck as this dude <laughs> nearly kills a kid trying to get a ball. I mean, what are we doing here? It's just a baseball. You're killing me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My picks of the day today are a three-leg parlay. I'm gonna start out with Freddie Peralta for seven Ks or more, then take Matt Waldron for five Ks or more, and top it off with Luis Castillo for five Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?